Hello, hello, hello. My story, very normal people. Today we have another normal people, which he, his name is Steven Schneider. Now, yes. we'll see a little bit about uh, <laughs> more about his name, where he comes from, but welcome, Steven, in our show, and it's a pleasure to have you in our show. Thank you. It's great to be here. It's a good way to end my week. It's Friday as we're recording this, so happy to do so. Good to, good to be talking to someone about the book and about author stuff and all that. Yes, yes, and that is a good thing that you are a very normal pe person, but you are an <laughs> author as well. <laughs> well, yes, yes. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I take a little uh, umbrage to being called normal, but we'll go with it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so don't forget. In our show, what we call normal, even a president is a normal person for us. Okay, <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> so, uh, Stephen, can you please tell our audience a little bit about yourself? Sure. I, um, I am a computer programmer by day. I work with databases and code. And I... I'm a parent. Uh, I live in a country area. We actually have a wolf uh, along with another dog and some cats. Um, I, I've always been very creative. I play music. I've been in a band. I worked on a cruise ship, uh, multiple other musical endeavors when I was in school. And um, now I've started writing books uh, inspired by my kids and it's been a great lot of fun. So, you said that you have a wolf? Yes, sir. Ooh. He, Who does it he, come? <laughs> he, he's not 100% a gray wolf or anything like that. What we were told was that he's a like 75% Sarloos wolf. But when you look at him, it's like, that is a wolf. You, he doesn't look like a dog. He looks like a wolf. He's big. He probably weighs 160, 170 pounds. Um, quite large, very, very uh, soft fur, uh, very thick fur. Uh, in fact, in the winter, when the wind's blowing and the snow's blowing, he won't be in his doghouse. He'll be laying down by the trees uh, and he shakes himself <laughs> off. He's fine. Uh, very friendly dog. He's goofy. Uh, we always tease him because the other dogs and even the cats, uh, he's afraid of them. And they, they like look at him. He's like, I'm sorry. And he can't. So we always say, Hunter, the other wolves are laughing at you. <laughs> so uh, people, my my son will tease his friends that have never been here before. They'll be outside and he'll go, oh, my God, there's a wolf. Run. And the friends freak out. And my son laughs at him and walks over and pets Hunter, because Hunter <laughs> never growled, bit, snapped, or anything. He's a great dog, wonderful dog. So, uh, so let let's keep on with the family. So, how many kids do you have? I I have two kids. Mm -hmm. um, they're both grown now. Uh, I started thinking about writing when they were younger, and I now wish I had written a little more when they were uh, younger. I did write some some Christmas stories for them. Um, but they, my one son works at a comic book store, um, and loves that. So the, the, uh, my other child is a very musical person. So we, we've got a lot of creativity, uh, in our family that, that we enjoy piano, uh, guitar, Christmas music. I was playing last night. So, so, uh, so you said that you were inspired by your kids, let's say, to yeah. write. Yeah? Yes. So, uh, I'll say, uh, how, how did it happen? How, how did it uh, give the, I'll say, the, the first part? How, how did it happen to you? <laughs> um, like a, a lot of authors, mm -hmm. when, when I, I was a Girl Scout leader when my daughter was younger. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I noticed the books that the girls were reading were the same books the boys were reading, and they were more uh, boy focused. And I'm like, are, are there there aren't many modern? And I wasn't completely right on this, but I'm like, there's not as many modern books for girls. I'd like to see girls uh, as the hero of the story, the superheroes, and all that. You know, and that was over ten years ago. 
And now in today's world, it's exploded. There's lots, you know, Wonder Woman and lots of strong female characters. Uh, but I thought I wanted to create a series of books for my Girl Scouts that had, uh, my idea was a female character that would be uh, like a little bit like MacGyver, like really smart, knows all her stuff and these adventures that would come about. Well, it, it it took me a couple years before I actually wrote anything. It was like, man, okay, no one will read my stuff. I can't write, you know, and all the same things that everybody always thinks about. And uh, when I finally did write it, 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 I got it done. Let's just say it, it's not the best thing in the world. And I kind of put it aside and went on and, you know, it took me a couple books of writing. Um, but one of the things that actually, actually got me to sit down was, I visited a friend for, well, it wasn't a friend yet. I visited for this event I was going to, and it was at this person's house who I didn't know and walked in and they had books everywhere. And, you know, we were talking, I heard a couple people talking about authors and I jumped in, who's my favorite author and, you know, gave my opinions. Well, it turns out the person whose house I was visiting was a very professional full-time author that wrote military sci-fi, had 35 books under their name, had written professionally their whole life, actually helped write some of the battle tech books and RPG back in the day. So, you know, I, I was like, wow, that's interesting. I've been thinking about writing and here's this real author in front of me. And I thought about it and went home and we sat down to watch TV that night. And it just happened to be the first time I ever watched Castle on ABC with Nathan Fillion. He's an author that, that and I'm like, wow, two author things in one, <laughs> yeah, crazy. one weekend. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like a sign. I, I mm. and I had and I realized I had just finished this uh, video game called Alan Wake, which is about an author, <laughs> and it's a horror story. And I'm like, wow, all this author stuff. It's kind of like take the sign you need to write, you know? So <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I started getting into it and then found out uh, there's a, another podcast, the Selmore book show, which at the time had Jim, Jim Kukrell and Brian uh, Cohen on it. And I found out Jim Kukrell's from Cleveland. He's like an hour North of me. So I just emailed him and said, Hey, you know, and then I started looking around and found this other author, Jay Thorne, uh, also in Cleveland, because Jim and him knew each other. And I'm like, man, I, I just see all these signs like pointing me to <laughs> you need to write. So that's what I've been doing for the last couple of years uh, is adding books. I've, I've been working on a Christmas story uh, for my kids this year after first time in a couple of years, I've written a Christmas story. So I've got multiple things uh, on the horizon ready to go. Uh, Steve, uh, can you please uh, tell us a little bit about your book, Embracing the Magic? The title sure. Is, oh, is a very, very good title. Very attractive. Very Thank good. you. Can you tell us it, a well, bit about that? <laughs> yeah, it's actually the first in what's turning out to be a series. So our uh, Kent State, which you may have heard of, member from the back of the 70s, the Kent State shootings that were big news. Um, I live very close to Kent State. And in Kent, they do a wizard fest every year. And I'm like, okay, I want to put a table up. I want to uh, be a part of this wizard fest. But I had no stories dealing with wizards or magic or anything. It's like, who goes to a Harry Potter wizard fest and buys a book that's a British spy? That's just not the, the right thing to do. So I said, okay, I want to at least get my name out there. I will write a short story. Let me just think of a quick idea and throw it. So I did. Well, by the time I got done that short story, I said, okay, there's some things I need to add. It needs to be longer. And oh, you know what? I could do a second story about this. And then a third and then a fourth. So I, I have the first book done. I'm working on the second. And I have planned for somewhere between five to seven, depending on how well things go. I've got four short stories in that. Actually, I've got like five or six short stories in that world, but four of them out there. So it just kind of snowballed. What the the story is about? That's that was your original question. I gave you the whole origins there. I, I won't um, let you without get without getting my answer, please. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, that's not what I asked you. Pay attention. <laughs> um, so the basic story, and I think a lot of kids can relate to this. There's in the world 
uh, uh, our main character is Samuel, and in his world, magic just exists. It's part of their world. Uh, just like air and sunshine, they have magic, but not everybody can channel the magic and do magic. And that's not really a problem, but the best magicians are in basically in charge of their town. They're the town magicians. And the backstory is, you know, way long ago, uh, it, it's a kind of a fantasy medieval type setting. And each town had uh, soldiers and army that protected them from the creatures out in the forest and other towns and, and brigands and vagabonds and all of that. Well, when magic was discovered in the world by a guy named Zardonis, uh, the people that had magic suddenly became more powerful than the soldiers. So they took over defeating the monsters, protecting their town and uh, making life better. Well, that was years ago. Now there's no monsters left. There's nobody attacking towns because the magicians are too powerful. So instead they do performances and the best magicians attract the best, uh, the most people to their town. And so the towns thrive through that and trade and, uh, the magicians are in charge. So our hero, Samuel, would love to have magic, but he doesn't. And his town magician is a fake. And this guy is not doing real magic. He's doing fake tricks. Uh, kind of like if Harry Houdini appeared in this world, what Harry Houdini would do. It would be sleight of hand, and it would be uh, these tricks to distract the audience while they do something else. And Samuel knows this. He sees it but nobody will listen to him because he's a kid. So a evil wizard attacks the town and challenges their town magician to a duel. And the town magician really can't duel. So he's going to go get trained by the grand wizard. And our hero Samuel tags along to make sure that Rory, the town magician really does get trained, but also there's a chance maybe the town, the grand wizard will find magic in him. And there we go on the adventure and see what happens to save the town and whether Samuel really has magic. That's very interesting. So, so what about you? Tell us about your magic that you have embraced. Let's say, oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, uh, I, I always. When I grow growing up, I've always read Stephen King, and he always has his author notes in there that he talks and writes, and they're very fun and interesting. So I've added something to mine uh, called my ramblings, and I talk about magic in the first book and how part of my my overall goal isn't just to write some books for kids to read. I want kids two parts. I want kids to write more and see that writing can be something they can do their whole life. Even if they become a doctor or an airline pilot or an accountant, that they can write and be creative their whole life. And writing is kind of like magic. You know, where do these stories come from? It's like there's magic all around. You just have to see it and not grow up so fast. <laughs> uh, I think too many adults miss the magic. Um, and so I talk about how there's magic all around and how to help kids uh, continue to see the magic and maybe some adults that can see the magic that they've been missing uh, through years of growing up and missing out on what's so magical about our world. Like right now, it's Christmas time as we're recording this and not everybody agrees with me, but I'm waiting for snow. I love snow and I want snow before Christmas because you can't go out when it's dusk and the snow's falling and tell me that that's not magical. Uh, even the the hard, most hardened Scrooge gets a little lift in their heart with snow, as long as they're not having to drive through it. <laughs> so that, that's the type of things I want more people to see in the world and kids to understand that uh, they can use what's around them in the world, use their ideas, the magic of thinking of uh, things through their imagination and writing stories and how that can be a part of their life. So, uh, do you think it's a need in our lives to believe in magic? Uh, unique, maybe. I think our world has kind of battered it out of us. It's very difficult to uh, think there's anything new to discover. You know, Raiders of the Lost Ark was set almost 100 years ago now because 
we don't have as many discoveries that people think. Uh, you know, a lot of the stories are not as fantasy based. We are getting more fantasy. I, I will give you, there is more fantasy. I think COVID and some of the other things going on have made people get back to fantasy a little bit, but our kids, they have screens in front of them all the time. They, they have the news, they have whatever they want. You know, the, the kids nowadays can watch every movie ever made, you know? So it's it, it, it not necessarily cynical, but it's hard to keep that sense of wonder and magic when everything's explained and there's nothing new to discover. I don't agree with that. I always think there's new things. I mean, we've got a couple acres here and we've got a small pine forest. It's only like an acre big, but every now and then I'll go up and I'll see something in the forest. I'm like, wow, how did that happen? What is that from? You know, there's still some things out there that make you wonder if you look for it. But also, I think <clears throat> there's something that I I, I, I was uh, wondering, how can you see, that, for example, for for my kids as well, you know, they're about 18 and, you know, it's like when you talk about something like, oh, this is like magic, oh, daddy, you don't know, this is like this now, you know. <laughs> it's like the magic is a little bit, uh, they, it, it's a little bit far from them because they know everything in one sense, you know, they just Google and just you find it. No magic there. Come on. <laughs> right. I, I, yes. My, my son is 22 and we're always having these disagreements. Here's, here's why he and I disagree. Mm. We think we know everything mm. about everything. We'll go back a hundred years ago and they thought the same thing. We know everything. It's all been figured out and solved. And then they discovered quantum physics and they discovered things below at the quantum world. And no, we don't know everything. And they discovered that there are some things about quantum physics that are different than Einsteinian physics. So you, I always tell my son, you can't tell me that this is definite, that this is true when there are things we still don't know. And we don't know some of the things we don't know about quantum physics. We find out new things all the time that don't fit what we've learned in the last hundred years about the world and science and physics. There's new things to discover. So what don't we know? That's where that's where I go by. If there are things out there that we don't even know that we don't know, then nothing is you know sacrosanct against the imagination and what could really exist. You know, people hunt Bigfoot, and this is something my son and I used to do uh, years ago with cryptids and all that. And people say, oh, Bigfoot doesn't exist. Other people say, yes, it does. Well, we can't prove it. And, and now there's people saying, well, maybe it does exist, but not in our dimension, not in our reality. And it slips in and out. Well, that's that's stupid. Now I'm a, well, I can't prove it, but you also can't say it definitely is not true. And that's where he and I butt heads. And that's where I think there's still magic. You know, I mean, the, there are things with quantum physics where they've taken an atom and split it and put it one of them in the space station and one of them down here on earth. And if they apply heat to the one on earth, the one on the space station gets hot. Well, how does that happen? And it's a, it's a experiment they have actually done. You know, if you would have told somebody a hundred years ago that you could do that, they would have been like, you're crazy. That can, well, yes, we are doing it now again. What didn't we know 300 years from now, or what didn't we know 300 years ago, and what will we find out and know 300 years from now that we don't know now? So that, that's my basis on it. So you can't tell me that any of this couldn't be true. Use your imaginations. It could be true. <laughs> so, Stephen, what is the, let's say that I like to say this one, you know, you, you are in front of uh, thousands of cameras and like we are watching uh, soccer matches now in Europe, you know, in Qatar is playing now. So, and everybody's watching all the players, all the cameras are there. Uh, billions are watching the matches. So, uh, and you have something to say to these, to this world, to the people. What would, would be your message to those guys? Oh. <laughs> I if I was going to talk to a bunch of people watching sports, I would say no, 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 maybe no, no, no. Oh. all the world. So all the all world. The cameras down on you. 
You are in the spotlight. Everybody's waiting for you. Like Dodo, Dr. Fauci was speaking when, when it was the COVID time, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so now it's your turn. You, you, <laughs> Dr. You, <Steven>. <laughs> use your imagination. Uh, that's where the magic is in the world. And again, mentioning quantum physics, there's a principle that's not proven yet that's looked at that in quantum physics, things that are observed or thought about become reality in quantum physics. So if enough people are using their imagination to think of magic in the world, to think of these wizards, to think of dragons, maybe enough of us will make it really come true. <laughs> Okay, Steve, if you have to, if you want to add something else, please say it because that, that's going to be the end now. <laughs> okay, uh, no, it, it, it's been a fun talk. I love the questions. Um, you know, I've got my books uh, coming out. I've got some Christmas stories, uh, ghost Christmas ghost stories, serial that I've been writing. Uh, so check it out on my website. Uh, and I hope everyone uh, enjoys the books. Okay, Stephen Schneider was with us and it was a pleasure to have you in uh, our show and we hope to see you again with something else. Magic. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's been fun. Okay, bye.